Right now, what I want to be looking at is bundles, partial differential equations, fields, operators, Hilbert spaces. And I'm happy to share what's going on with it. I'm happy to talk about what we... I'm actually not talking about you. I'm not criticizing you. I'm saying that you want to insulate scientists and give us the academic freedom, freedom that we were promised. And, and, and I love and talking like to people, Brian. But it's no, uh, uh, Hold on. Let me, let me finish, please. Sure. I want to say... I don't feel like my other colleagues are engaging with the public in a way that is uh, is going to further this project that you're describing. In other words, they sit, we sit in our in our offices or our laboratories, and we just do what we're supposed to. We never talk to the public. We never communicate what we're doing with their money. And so, of course, why, why should I give you more money? You just told me like I can't understand. If if I could understand what you're doing, it wouldn't be worth a Nobel Prize, right, Feynman? Uh, so, to what extent do we as scientists have an obligation to have portals of our own, present company excluded? Well, you, you know, you're doing it, I'm doing it. I, I'd rather be doing that stuff, but. Um, what stuff? But, Wait, sorry. You'd rather be doing what? Look, when I like to take a break from actually doing research on something or thinking about something or building something or whatever it is, I love talking to people. I'm a social person. I like explaining mm -hmm. what I know. Turning everything into interpersonal drama or turning everything into a market or turning everything into a game theoretic exercise is killing what we knew how to do even a short time ago. So I, I would love to do, you know, half a day's worth of, uh, you know, actual research equations, whatever. And then I'd like to record something, but if I'm going to record something, I just want to spill into a studio and I want to tell somebody, you know, in a week's time, get these things worked up as graphics. I don't want to think about payroll. I don't want to think about human resources. I don't want to think <laughs> about uh, whether or not sponsors and right. Well, it's like I record in this room with a lot of glass. All the audio engineers complain, dude. You should really, you know, you c cover your dining room in uh, in tarps. Uh, that's going to be great for for my family, where I, I've taken over the dining room and covered it in tarps. I, I'm just. <laughs> I care about two things here. One, I care about inspiring people. And two, I care about getting people a future. And I'm looking at the people I'm trying to inspire and I'm trying to get a future for. And they don't even know what risk they're in. And they don't appreciate it. And they turn things into drama because they're not strong enough to, to withstand like all the voices of, you know, like if the Lancet says, well, this definitely didn't come from a, a lab in Wuhan. Well, who am I? I, you know, I guess the Lancet said it. It, it. It's important to recognize that we can inspire people. But if I can't even get you to wake up, and I can't even get somebody in the government to, to, to understand ideas have consequences. Ulam and Teller's ideas have great consequences. Mm. We are not... Brian, I've spent a year... I've more or less told people why I believe there are three generations of fermions a year ago. I've not had a single physicist on planet Earth say, I want to talk to you about why you say there are three generations of fermions. I gave a reason why the world appears to be chiral, but actually is not chiral. Why it appears that the weak force, beta decay, uh, knows it's left from its it's right. Maximally violating of C. Yeah. Right. And... I have not had one person come to me and say, I want to talk to you about that. Do um, you think it's credentialism? You're not in no. academia. You're seen as an outsider. I get, I get literally no, no, no. a book no, no, no. It's week. not me, Brian. It's not me. It's the field. When, when Peter White came out with his idea, um, which was to build it around uh, the group SU3, which has the strong communicates the strong force, which is what holds nuclei together when the protons want to run away from each other, packed in so tightly. Mm -hmm. um, I, I made sure to read what he wrote, and I called him up, and he said, yeah, nobody's calling. Now, I don't have to agree with him, but I at least right. understand what he did do, and I wanted to make absolutely sure that I grasped the general idea. What I'm trying to tell you is I knew that no one was going to much call Peter. No one is listening to each other. There's almost no one working on physics. And I, I think that that's the real statement is, is that the question is going to be, well, what does the community say? The community basically isn't doing physics. Go to your local uh, 
University's physics, you know, high energy theory seminar. And I challenge you to listen to a talk uh, and find anything that sounds like physics in it. In general, it sounds like, oh, we're, we're in six dimensions, we've got a, a, a compact, simple group, um, and we look at the following fields that nobody's ever seen in human history, we treat it supersymmetrically, even though we've never seen supersymmetry. We're not working.